Hi, my name is Darian Embling and I'm the Pest Plant Team Leader at Waikato Regional Council. It's so great to have this chance to share our experience of velvet leaf in the Waikato region. Well, it dates back to 2011 when a farmer found a weed he didn't recognise and rung us for help. It was confirmed by our staff as velvet leaf and we traced it to a couple of maize farms who had been unknowingly spreading this nasty weed. Fortunately for us, the maize had only ever been supplied to eight properties. We visited them all, confirmed the presence of valve leaf and began working with landowners to manage the infestations. We also brought in farming arable research and egg research to identify management options in the maize. Now, at the time, there were no rules in New Zealand for valve leaf and it was two years later that MPI declared it an unwanted organism. We then added it to Waikato Regional Council's Pest Management Plan in 2014, declaring it a pest in our region. Now, jump forward to 2016. As you know, velvet leaf was found in imported fodder beet seed. MPI responded with a national comms, and this resulted in a number of Waikato properties being identified with velvet leaf, and not just in fodder beet. About the same time, a contractor was inspecting a maize crop before harvest and found it totally full of velvet leaf. We knew we had a chance to control its spread, but it was going to require action. Our regional rule enabled us to set up our own incursion response team. Our objective was clear, to find out how big the velvet leaf issue was in the Waikato and then make a plan to contain its spread. So over the four weeks, we had more than 50 staff working full time on the response. We inspected 101 properties. We issued three restricted place notices and we completed 29 biosecurity plans for each of the properties which had velvet leaf. On some of the most infected properties, we found tens of thousands of plants in the maze. We also did some direct control ourselves. So key to our response was tracing pathways to infestations. What we've been able to confirm from this work is that velvet leaf got onto Waikato farms and was spread via infested fodder beet seed from overseas, infested maize crops and maize silage, unclean machinery and also the dung from stock which had eaten infested feed. Now the impact of velvet leaf on a property is huge, we've been told that, but I want to share with you an example from Waikato which makes it even more real. We had a farm with a 35 hectare maize crop. Half the farm was heavily infested with velvet leaf and the rest of the farm had the odd plant as well. As a declared pest in the Waikato, there are strict rules. They can't spread velvet leaf, they have to destroy the plant and they have to clean machinery leaving the property. Waikato Regional Council issued a restricted notice on the property to contain the spread and to also give the farmers some clarity around what they could and couldn't do. It ultimately meant they couldn't sell the crop, putting the entire income of the crop and the farm at risk. That's because the crop could no longer be used for its intended purpose, which was maize silage. It left us with two options, destroy the crop or find a safe alternative use for it. It was through the sheer hard work of Waikato Regional Council staff and the goodwill of other organisations that an alternative use for it was found. The maize crop could be sold as starch with the process killing any remaining velvet leaf. While this couple hasn't lost their entire income, it will be substantially less than it would have been. They could have got around $160,000 for the maize silage but they will now be expected to get around eighty to $90,000 for maize grain to starch. But the losses for this couple go further. The crop had to remain on the farm longer and that meant they couldn't plant their grass silage. It's been another devastating blow for their income stream and a further loss of $40,000. So all up, this couple will lose around $100,000 in income this year and in the years to come. They've had many sleepless nights worrying about where the money would come from. Their health, which wasn't good beforehand, has also suffered. Looking after their well-being and the welfare of others impacted by velvet leaf 
played a major part in our response. People and businesses suffered financial losses, abuse from members of the farming community and attacks on their reputation. We've provided this farming couple and others with all the support we can and we've made sure they've had access to the Rural Support Trust. This couple has also had some great support from the fed farmers. Our response to this farm has cost our council too. We provided part funding of $22,500 for helping to pull plants and another $2,500 for disposal of two tonnes of velvet leaf into a secured containment facility. Our focus now is on the future. In the Waikato we are moving to long term management of velvet leaf because we know we'll be dealing with it for the next 50 to 60 years and that's if we can keep it contained. If we can't, it'll be a life sentence for this region and for New Zealand.